why, why don't we take a minute, uh, Jules, why don't you tell us a little bit about John, so we've got a little bit of an idea about who this guy is and mm. where he fits in. Mm. Well, uh, Myrtle and I put in a brief abstract to see if we could score another conference, we did, and they, they sent us to Montreal. Yeah. And the, I needed some weed, obviously. So, Skunk Magazine is one of the oldest magazines in the world, cannabis culture. I think and, we had um, Julie on in the first week of Yeah, that's right, lockdown. we had Julie on soon. There's, um, yeah. there's one of our copies of yeah. Skunk. Oh. So, um, we um, got hold of this man, John, at Skunk and said, we're new in town, we, you can't believe how famous we are, can we get some <laughs> weed off you? Us. We're really famous. So he, um, he got hold of um, his compadre at Skunk and he whizzed round to the front of the building at the conference and I came out in a jacket and collar and sat in the car and this dude looked across and said, Jesus, you're old. Uh, <laughs> old S. <laughs> so um, the weird, weird thing about John is when we arrived in Montreal, I got everything crossed about who my landlord was at the Airbnb. And he happened to be a Senegalese guy. Okay. And I was talking to John, thinking he was my Airbnb, and he thought I was just completely freaking mad. <laughs> He'd never met me in... Uh, ever. So that was weird, actually, meeting him for the first time. But you know what? In Montreal for ten days, he showed us a real good time. And he's such a stalwart, and he's been at it for so long, and I've heard him on many sort of podcasts and stuff. He's, um, he's a man of many words. He's a very eloquent man. And uh, are you there, John? Can you hear everything I'm saying? Yeah, I don't believe none of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see your face, man. Welcome to Johannesburg at half past seven in the evening. Thank you, thank you. Weather's quite nice for this time of year, I guess. Huh? Well, what what actually... Uh, yeah, I've never been to South Africa. No, well, we're inviting everybody I along. Of delay. Yeah, I'm just getting used to it, man. There is a little bit of a delay here. So, John, what promoted me okay. to actually get hold of you um, this week was... Uh, Vegas put a, a post up of um, the local park with a bunch of cops on bicycles measuring the distance between people. And I thought, for, I, I thought that was really, really quite bizarre because we're going through the motions of a lockdown here, but, and as now Dan will point out, that um, it's the longest lockdown, there's been the most arrests on lockdown, there's been more <coughs> things banned on lockdown, most but lockdown, yeah. I feel totally blessed that the cops aren't measuring us. That, you, it must be pretty bizarre to you watching all of this happening. Um, I mean, Montreal's been one of the hardest places in Canada, half the cases, I think, in, in Canada or in Montreal. So, I mean, they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to take a little bit of a conservative approach. I mean, I'm of two minds. Uh, you know, I mean, basically, we've been fighting government for so long that we really don't trust what they have to say. But at the same time, you try to err, you know, I did it, caution kind of thing. You know, you'd hate to bring illness to somebody else. So, I mean, it's a mix between compassion and freedom kind of thing. But I think, in my case, I can't speak for the rest, but I don't mind, like, like losing a couple of temporary liberties, you know, as long as they're temporary, you know, and they're for a good cause. Um, I don't know, I just think uh, it, it, it's, it's strange how polarized and div divided that the, the whole world has become, where even the, even things we agree on, on it's a part of what out there, and it, 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 be, it doesn't look good for the future of, of solving, of coming to solutions. You know? We've lost really, I think, the, the ability to debate, to debate things intelligently and civilly. You know? And I mean, this just showed it. And again, it's showing now down south with, with another killing. You know, uh, it's what happens when you put like overly militarized, overly steroided, overly like people that have seen war as cops, and you know, put give them every weapon and you know that you're at your disposal, and without having the right you know temperament and go police the world. You know, and you know, I don't know. It's for me, it's it's kind of a frustrating time in the sense that I understand what sides have to say and at the same time it, it's 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 really damning about how i don't think we're ever going to get there again yeah right there's no when we can no. disagree simply okay. there's there's no middle ground and there's no no and even people that you consider allies basically uh there's so much emphasis on the language of the debate that you know what's lost in the message is the message 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'm just for me, it's frustrating. Like I, I, I'm, I'm sort of like taking a step aside from, I wouldn't say activism, but basically whole, wholesale activism. Sure. You know I mean, I'm, I'm trying to pick my battles a bit more carefully these days. You know? Well, when when I, when I when I when I when I met you three years ago, you were just about to go to face your your charges for, well, I think it was trafficking seeds or something benign like that. And you ended up with a bracelet, uh, didn't you? You ended up with an ankle bracelet, courtesy of the state? No, no not, not an ankle bracelet. One of the more severe conditions. I was only allowed three hours out uh, a week, you know. But it's still better than jail. Yeah, sure. Uh, by the time it got to my charges, they had instituted the Cannabis Act here. And there was no point in fighting anymore because even a victory would have changed nothing, you know. At the time we're fighting this case, uh, we had like the reason we were doing it is because we didn't want the genetics to become property, uh, exclusive property of anybody, and uh, that's what they were setting up to do. That's what they're still trying to set up to do. But basically, at that time, they changed the law to the point where even if they wanted, it would have changed nothing. But we pled out. I mean, it cost a lot of money. You know, uh, it hurt the magazine tremendously because we lost our advertising base for for a good couple of years. You know, I had to keep it going through my pocket, you know, pay, like, we didn't fire, like, let fill any employees for the first couple of years, even though we didn't print for an entire year. Wow. Meanwhile, in the salaries, too. Um, I mean, on the whole, it probably was like a $300,000 uh, case and basically damages to the magazine, plus still paying fines. In the beginning, they wanted 800000 fines, customs and duties, actually, just excise taxes and things like that. That's good. It appeared nowhere on their on their schedule, so basically they decided to tax it and levy it as as high as they could, you know. And that's, that's what they did. That's complete but madness. It's almost over. Finish most of us. Um, in hindsight, it's nothing compared to what other people are still facing. There's still people in jail in the U.S. for life for plants. Sure. You know, you know we uh, you get that sometimes. In the last few weeks we, on the show, we've been visiting various parts of Canada and North America, asking them what it's like in lockdown. And we spoke to Julie about a month ago in California, and she was explaining that one of the silver linings of all of this is the fact that weed has been classified an essential item and the dispensaries stay open. Has that happened in Canada? Is that, is that available uh, to you yeah, there? Quebec stores, the government stores haven't shut down at all. And there's still lineups out the door. Um, Ontario had deemed them non still and then deemed them essential after a pill cry. Um, it's funny how basically something has become essential all of a sudden where they used to jail you for. <laughs> yeah, just as you were trying to, you know, just as you were allowed out three times a week, then all of this snowballs into this. I don't think it's pretty. It's I, I was saying, I'm, I'm the only one who should be allowed out. You know. <laughs> uh, that's really funny. And tell, tell me.